Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we are back for another brand new video and it's a weird video, I'm going to be honest with you because that game of football has so many mixed emotions and so many weird thoughts up there in the noggin I don't really know where to start off but as always we are here to break down, react and discuss to the latest Rangers game which finished Rangers 1, Malmo 2 I don't know why I said it in that order but Malmo 2, Rangers 1 was the final score and it's weird right because that is our first Champions League game back for 10 years and it was the exact same scoreline it was versus the exact same team it was 10 years ago to the day. What? Honestly my head is absolutely fried and I think that's what happens when it looks like it is gonna be 2-0 when you've already written the storylines in your head when you're already feeling deflated but then that man again that always carries this with such honest pride and honestly carries it with such class by the name of Stephen Davis, just comes out in nowhere, unleashes one and gives us all some hope because that's what I've got right now, ladies and gentlemen, because that last gasp goal versus Malmo, Rangers go in to the game back at Ibrox versus Malmo and a game of football that I can safely say with every fibre my being, well can he be any worse than we were? in the first leg. And that's honestly how I'm feeling right now, given what I saw and saw how poorly we played, the fact that we go into the second leg with the opportunity to bring it back to our house, full capacity, Ibrox rocking the 12th man there to spur us on, honestly, feels like a miracle. Thank you, Stephen Davis. Thank you. And listen, we've been through a lot together and you know, I didn't ever pull my punches or try and be a people pleaser. I always just say what I want and People agree or disagree, you shout at me in the comments either way. But for me, I'm not going to be too overly negative in this reaction. It's not going to be a rant or a angry reaction. I'm not, not going to destroy the team or anything like that. Was it a bad performance? Yes. Was it the worst performance we've seen in Europe under Steven Gerrard? I think there's a very good case for that. And the two minutes that we will speak about in the next couple minutes from the game recap was by far the worst. I've seen not only Steven Gerrard's Rangers team in Europe, but us in general because we genuinely lost our heads and we will speak about that but I'm not going to go too overly negative because when you again you look at it and you take your, your emotions out of it we've got a 2-1 loss right but it's all set up for that home game at Ibrox so I'm not going to throw my toys out the pram but there needs to be an improvement because that performance for the majority of that game just wasn't what we've came to expect from the standard set by Steven Gerrard's Rangers team. Speaking of team though, we of course made seven changes coming into this game and just like I said in yesterday's match preview, I'm not going to sit here and pull the excuses out and say this guy wasn't playing, this guy wasn't playing, that is why we lost. Like I said, it was, I saw this as a more of an opportunity for players that might not be the first name on the old team shoot. Some of them offered bright spots and you could see little pieces. Others for me didn't do enough in the game to really stamp their authority on the name of you need to be getting mere minutes and Aye, that's where I'm sitting with this one. I'm not going to pull out any excuses because we went ahead and lost the game. So I'm just going to move away from that and transition in to the actual game recap. Because you look at the game, the first five, six minutes, it was a brilliant start. Like, honestly, we had two set pieces in the opening six minutes of this game. It was us. It was asking the question. It was us that grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck. It was just so unfortunate that... The set pieces that we put in were just wasted after wasted because that's usually our strength and it's usually Malmo's weakness but we helped them make it their strength in this game with either disappointing deliveries, missing the men going behind them or the ball being on a sixpence but we're offside or giving away silly free kicks. It was that kind of almost and maybes for the opening 10 minutes or so of this game. So I was fine and I was content at this moment. In fact, I was actually looking more at the Malmo side because they actually moved away from their preferred formation and how they set up and how they play to counteract us and slow our fullbacks down and gone forward. And again, to me, I still take a lot of pride in that, that there's European teams at this stage of the competition that's adjusting and changing things for us. We're not gonna, they're not just going to turn up. I think they're going to roll over us now. They changed everything about the way they play and who plays where to counteract us. So that shows you what they think of this Rangers team and how dangerous our fullbacks actually are. And when I'm speaking about fullbacks, for me, only one really turned up in this game. And I didn't want to be saying that because you know I love our boy BB, but you could see he's not played a lot of football and it wasn't what we've came to expect from that Croatian wand of a left foot. I mean, Tavernier at least go forward, he's putting the balls into the mixer and that gave us the biggest chance and the biggest chance overall in the game in the 16th minute where him and Lundstrom combined beautifully down the right hand side and Tavernier picks out Scotty Arfield 8 yards out inside the box, you're expecting the ball to burst the back of the net but he takes a touch, 
Then his eventual shot is softly caressed. I think he mishits it and it falls lovingly into the arms of the goalkeeper who, if you saw his face, he was absolutely delighted at that because he was expecting the ball to go into the back of net, but he was able just to catch it like that. It's on Arfield, unfortunately scuffed the effort. But despite it being mostly one-way traffic and almost maybe so far up to this point, Malmo did show why they are so dangerous and why they score so many goals because just a couple of minutes after that, they get down the left-hand side, gone after Barisic, his side of the park, he skins them inside and releases a shot at the near post which is easily saved by McGregor. But again, that was showing at least they can make things happen and create opportunities when you give them some time on the ball. That's where a lot of my frustrations actually lie when I go back and think of this game now for large periods when we were quote unquote off it or really poor with the ball because the first 50 minutes it was all positive when we're looking really sharp but then just like that it just kind of changed from that one shot on target we started to sit off a little bit more, our passing started becoming erratic, it became very careless and it was coming from all over the park, Lundstrom, Stephen Davis was giving the ball away and when Stephen Davis is giving the ball away, you know sons, no right, but aye, that's what was frustrating, we just couldn't keep a hold of the ball and we sort of given the advantage to Malmo and we just started playing right into their hands because we spoke about it in yesterday's preview video, they love to hunt, they love to live and die off any mistakes from the opposition team and we just played right into the hands. It was their bread and butter. And as they grew into the game, we just continued to give them more and more ammunition. But before we do get to the end of the first half and move on to that unbelievable second half that I can't believe I'm going to speak about, if I'm honest with you, there is a couple of more incidents to talk about from the first half. The first one being in the 22nd minute where Ryan Kent finally has a little bit of magic. It explodes down the left-hand side. He cuts inside, sets the man away. The guy comes in and just kicks him. It's a clear foul now. Is it inside the box? I've only seen one highlight. It looks like it is just on the line, but it could just be outside. But whether you agree if it was a penalty or not, the one thing we can all agree on is that it was a clear foul that was missed by the referee. Honestly, the guy literally just ran in and dropped the leg as if he was Hulk Hogan in the late or early 90s and 80s. But the non-foul seemed to wake up Ryan Kent, who up to this point was so off the actual boil, but he started playing very, very angry. The next moment or two, he got down the left-hand side on a sort of counter-attack. He tried to whip it and he scored right. Scott right, ended up slipping, and that just shows you the unlock. But the one moment where we looked like us, when I sat back and went, right, that's us playing right there. It was when Lundstrom got his heads up, played a wonderful through ball, long 40-yard diagonal right to Ryan Kent, who killed the ball on a sixpence, ran by two, tried to get by the third, was eventually fouled, then Itton picks up the ball, he tries to pick out Scott Wright, and the attack breaks down. But if you want a wee summary of how the game pretty much went for Rangers, it was that. Moments of magic that slowly but surely, the longer the play went on, fizzled out to just frustration. But I, I think I've said frustration enough so far in today's video. Let's transition in to the second half where, yes, the two goals come from Malmo. And honestly, I can't even believe that this actually happened because it's so unlike us, man. And for one reverse pass from the middle of the park, Anders Christensen, who we spoke about again in the preview, being very dangerous on the ball. It's a wonderful ball in behind Hollander. But the defending the Rangers is so, so strange because Tav gets sucked in the inside, Lundstrom then has his man, but then full credit to Malmo, I mean, it's a wonderful weighted pass to the back post and it's a fantastic volley, but again, I'm looking at it from the Rangers' end, of course I'm, I'm just frustrated about how slow and unresponsive we were in the defence because that boy was wide open for a good 30 seconds and it was only the last 10 seconds we actually recognised it and tried to put someone on him, but by that point, it's far too late. But that's football, ladies and gentlemen. You can switch off one time, you can get punished one time by one very good attack inside, which again, Malmo actually are. But what happens just 35 seconds later, can't happen, ladies and gentlemen, whether it's the Champions League, Europa League, five asides with that one guy that's always shouting at everybody else. You just cannot feel sorry for yourself. And that's honestly what it feels like. We just conceded that goal, everyone's head dropped, which is so uncharacteristic by this. Rangers team and we ended up playing ourselves into the trouble where Tavernier tries a reverse pass to Stephen Davis. Davis isn't looking at him because they're they're not communicating with each other. The, the I think it's I think it's Kolak actually it wins the ball originally back first. It's a very good attacking swift counter by Malmo. That's what they bring aggression and pressure and they end up going down the right hand side. The ball goes underneath corner Goldson's foot and then it's a beautiful finish 
by the Malmo player, tucking it into the inside of the post, giving Alan McGregor no chance. And I'm honestly, I'm not taking anything away for the finish because it is gorgeous. But the defending and the way we responded to the goal is a massive learning curve for this Rangers team because you just can't do that, man. But you know something, ladies and gentlemen, and I think this tells you everything you need to know about the character of this Rangers team, right? We went down 2-0 there versus a very good side away from home where the Malmo fans were absolutely rocking as well, by the way. And a gamey football that we didn't deserve to that point to be 2-0 down. It was completely self-inflicted. We absolutely just switched off for literally two minutes of a 90-minute game. But what I absolutely love about this Rangers team is they were able to shake it off get back at it and refocus because that game could have went away very, very quickly from us. Let's not beat around the bush. 2-0 doing. We've seen Rangers teams in the past go away and that's just it. That's just over many, many moons ago in European football. That's what we came to expect from Rangers when we played in Europe. But no, on this team, no Steven Gerrard's team. Again, very frustrated about those two minutes, but I saw enough from the bounce back here, we started to ask some questions. But again, was it perfect? Not was it to our unbelievable best? No, but we showed that we can still take charge of that game and at least ask some questions. And I thought Scott Wright, who I was surprised if I'm honest, was kept on the part. When Cedric Gittin came off for Fashion Sekala, I was a little bit miffed because to me, Cedric Gittin was doing the role that we were asking him to do. Play with his back to go, hold the bop and bring others and feed others. And he played, he was asking questions. He was going after the centre backs. But he came off, Scott Wright, would remained on the park, and for me, it was a bit questionable, but the longer the game went on, he had flashes where he started to look at, and again, something that we always speak about with the Malmo side in the preview is defensively, that is where they are weak, and when we actually started to ask questions and commit people, put balls into the box and put balls in behind, did you see how many mistakes that these centre-backs we're making. Honestly, I can't believe we didn't take advantage yet. Anyway, the amount of double bounces that fell in the box, the amount of times the players whiffed at people, all of that, then stuff that I've seen in that last 20, 25 minutes has given me enough confidence to say that game at Ibrox is going to be vastly, vastly different by the time that scoreline comes out. And listen, I know people's going to be jumping in the comment section and shouting at me saying, CG, you're far too optimistic. You're supposed to be doing this. I'm angry. I'm annoyed. So am I, people. But again, I've seen enough in that Rangers team and with that goal what we're yet to discuss flipped the mentality completely because we needed that badly and of course when we need Sahan right when there's a moment in a game or in fact when there's a second in a game because it was literally the last kick of the ball there was only ever going to be one man that steps up because cream rises to the top and this man's the ultimate professional and it's a wonderful goal as well it's no scrambled in or anything it's not tapping at the back post that is a player showing that he's still good at despite he's aging 36 years on this earth even though I didn't really believe it with the way that he actually plays but the way the goal actually breaks down it's again pressure 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 from Rangers it falls to Davis and for once in the entire game we actually push the shoot button. Because I don't know about you, but we played ourselves and it's so many good positions, but none of them was actually shooting. But Davis took the initiative, knowing if he missed it, it was 2 0. If he doesn't hit that on target, it doesn't burst in it, it's 2 0, the game's over. But he's willing to be that guy, he unleashes it, it's in the back of the net before the goalkeeper can even move. And again, that gives us the opportunity to live, to fight another day. And that's what we have now set up next week, thanks to that wonderful goal by Stephen Davis and. The, the mentality change in this Rangers team to not feel sorry for themselves for the rest of the game and lose their minds, but to actually bounce back and grow their way into the game despite it no going all their way. That's given me enough, ladies and gentlemen, and it's set up very, very nicely going in to next week's game. But that's it for me. Again, I, I normally pick out individual performances and I say, oh, this guy was incredible or this guy was fantastic, but I can't really say that overall for the living. I thought um, Hollander was good. I thought our boy Stephen Davis was good. I thought Lundstrom was very good in the first half, but kind of fell away where I think him and Arfield, I just didn't think it works because to me, Lundstrom's kind of coming in for Arfield. I felt like the two of them was wanting to try and go into the same positions and one of them had to be sacrificed. So the balance was a little bit wrong for me the longer the game went on. But aye, that's how I'm looking at the game. If I'm picking a man in the match, it has to be one man and one man only. Stephen Davis. But that's me all done and dusty with today's video. If you did enjoy the video, <laughs> I don't know if you can enjoy today's video, make sure you let me know down there in the comment section below and tell me how you're feeling now that the scoreline finished Malmo 2, Rangers 1 with that goal right at the old death, keeping us alive in the tie. But until next time, I've been CJ Over 92. Thank you so much for watching and bye.